What's going on guys and gals of YouTube? Thanks for joining me for another episode of DIY Amateur Hour. It's been a while since I made a video, but today's episode is going to be one that I've been thinking about doing for a while, wanting to do for a while, so I said, why not? Let's finally do it. Um, you guys haven't been introduced to this car yet. Hopefully you will in the spring. It's been a long time coming, but I want to make it worthwhile. So, without further ado, let's dive into the video. Today's episode involves the keys for that car, some die cast models, and a drill bit, among some glues and other things. As you can see in these pictures, um, I'll give a shout out to the guy if I can find his link again. He opens up one of these model cars and puts his key in it, so he kind of has a cooler looking key, and it's unique, kind of adds a little bit of style. So I've never done this before, um, it seems like it should be relatively simple. Um, but I'm going to dive into it for my own car and if you can find a model of your old car that still uses these old keys, you can do it for yours too. So let's dive into it. So my dad kind of got me all these Fieros kind of as a gag gift a few years ago for Christmas. Um, but I really like them. I appreciate them. And as you can see, this one's already opened. So this is going to be the one that we use for this project. First thing we're going to want to do to open these up is drill out this rivet right here. There isn't one in the back, so I assume that once we get this rivet out, the car is going to kind of pry open or reveal something else to help us open it. So these are the keys for my Pontiac Fiero and you can see there's a round key and a square key or a rectangle key whichever you'd like to use. Um, it may be a shock to some of you young people but back in the 80s uh, a lot of car manufacturers especially GM used to use two keys for their cars. The round key would be for the doors and the trunk and the square key was for the ignition. Obviously we can't use the square key for this project because it would not fit in the ignition with the car on it. So the round key will be going in the car. Shout out to Chris at BS Rebuild. He makes awesome videos. He's kind of the inspiration for why I do this. So we got to make the round key fit in the square car. So this is kind of where I want the key to sit. Uh, the back of the frame is tucked in, but you can see how much it's sticking out. So I'm going to have to cut out probably the entire front, that red portion under the where the hood would start. I'm probably going to cut all of that out. And then we're going to have to lose um, the front of the plastic kind of up to the point where the dash starts, where it separates right there. Probably going to have to cut that out. And... I don't know if hot glue would hold the key in or what the best way to hold that in would be, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so I cut the front end off of the body plastic, um, but for future reference, but for future reference, I probably would have left this vertical piece on and cut it just in front of that because um, you can see a little bit of gap behind the windshield when you put it on and also this is about the placement of where you're going to want your key so that the end of the square just sticks out past the nose of the car um, otherwise it won't fit in the door lock so it fits like that it's 
kind of debating on how to attach the key to the frame and then attach the body to the key slash frame. I'm going to try and use some fiberglass resin. I know this isn't fiberglass. You've got aluminum and probably a steel key and more aluminum frame probably. Um, but it's what I have and uh, the resin is about trash anyway. So that's what I'm going to use to try and put this thing back together. So this is where I'm going to leave the project for the evening. Uh, we just put some resin between the frame and the key. There's the focus. Um, clamped it together so that the key is flush to the bottom of the car. There's resin on the other side of the key as well as over the top of the key. So hopefully we can get a decent bond. Like I said, I know this is fiberglass resin and this is all metal, but it's what I have. And you can see some resin by the wheels that we'll have to clean off later. But I'm gonna let this sit for uh, 12 hours. We'll check on it. So a quick little update. Uh, it's not 12 hours later. It's six days later. Got a little busy. Um, but anyway, here we are. Resin's dried. You can hold it by the key. But we're gonna put on a little more resin just for extra security, kind of through this hole here and around the sides. And maybe come back in the morning and put it all back together.